So once again, good morning, everybody. What I want to do today is primarily two things. One is to go over the exam, and the other is to finish our flashcards program. Now, for the results of the ex exam, uh, it was pretty good. Uh, the average over both classes was uh, about 85%, uh, which is terrific. Uh, you may have noticed that uh, I don't know if you looked or not, but the grade that you thought you were going to get versus the grade that you got is a little bit different. Now, I promised uh, 40 questions, and uh, what I gave you is 43. Well, what I did is increased everybody's score by three. All right, so that was the, the built-in boost. So if you had scored a uh, 39, uh, so instead you got um, three added. If you went over 40, then what I did is uh, I gave you just a little bit over 40, maybe 41. Uh, and that's the reward for doing so well in the first place. Uh, there's uh, something really special about a, a dog in, uh, in, in one of those Elizabethan collars. They really don't know what to do with themselves. Uh, poor puppy. Uh, anyway, let's go over the uh, exam. Anybody have any questions before I start that? All right. Now, uh, the exam is uh, configured to come up in a different order for everyone. So uh, are you able to review, get back into the exam and review your answers? I believe that that uh, option is available to you. I figured that might be the case. So the ones that I got wrong and I realized, and also are not the ones I realized I made a stupid mistake, like not reading the question all the way, I wrote down. Okay. So instead of trying uh, to figure out, ah, oh, it was this number, no. Okay, what about uh, everybody else? Can you get into your exam? Yep. Good, good. All right. So as I do them in the order that they're on screen, try to find the uh, question in your own exam. All right. So uh, which of the following is not a valid technique for creating a function stub. If you remember, uh, function stub is when you believe that you're going to have a function. Uh, you see the need, the need to have a function. Uh, so you create the um, a function stub, which is just the name of the function, its parameters, and then uh, something to indicate that it's not finished. So the only one of these which doesn't work as a function stub is in my case, A, leave the function body empty. You simply can't do that. Uh, you can use a pass statement in, to, to give the function a body. There's an exception. I mean, you probably would not have chosen this. Uh, well, actually, yeah, it's the not a valid technique. So you can raise an exception. We've talked about exceptions uh, a little bit. You can raise an exception that says, this function hasn't been written yet. You can print a message saying, it's not, you know, not re you're not ready to call this function. Uh, but the only one you really positively can't do is A. Okay. Which input causes the uh, goodbye to be printed immediately? Um, you know, I was looking at this question and uh, where it says output next, um, maybe that's a little unclear. Uh, but what they're getting at is suppose you put something in, what is it that you could put in that will cause it to skip directly to goodbye? And it's while x is greater than or equal to zero. So what you're looking for is what of the, which of these choices would be false immediately. 
and that would be negative one. So while negative one greater than or equal to zero, no, it's false. So you go right to goodbye. Does anybody have any questions on that? Boy, we're missing a lot of people today. I wonder why. Why are we missing a lot of people today? Was there a memo that went out among students that said, uh, you know, consider skipping class today? Maybe something to do with that internet situation last night. Oh, you think so? Uh, I know the internet was uh, down for maintenance a little bit last night, but that was last night. And uh, just a guess. Yeah. Okay. Because I know students do pass around uh, memos, like what to wear the next day. Like nobody, uh, no, nobody tells me, but every student on campus is wearing uh, wellies on a particular day. So I, I don't get it. Somehow you exchange information uh, that uh, I guess faculty members aren't privy to. Okay, so what is the value of sys.argv1 plus the length of sys.argv1 when the command line is uh, prog.py uh, 121. Okay, so which of these is sys.argv1? Choice of those between those two. It's the one twenty one, isn't it? That's correct. So this is arg v zero, and this is arg v one. So the correct output. Is what? Okay, I'm thinking runtime error because that is definitely a string and that is definitely a number and you can't add a number plus a string. Anybody have questions on that? How did you know that that was a string and not a number? Uh, which, sys.argv1, that part? Yep. Well, that, that's the definition of argv. Uh, it's a list of strings making up the command line. Oh, okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, what is the output? Uh, the list is a two, one, three, four, seven, six. Uh, okay, four uh, index and value in enumerate. So that's going to give you uh, in the variable index, you'll get zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And in value, you'll get the corresponding value from the list. So let's see, if the index is equal to the value, print star, uh, otherwise print the value and it's all gonna be on one, one line, there'll be no new lines. So let's see, uh, this is position zero, so index would be zero, value is eight, that's not a star, so it prints, is, prints eight. This is index one, but the value is two. So no star for you. Uh, instead, it'll print two. So we've eliminated A. Uh, then we've also eliminated D. Okay, at zero, one, two. Well, if the index is two, but the value is one, so it's gonna print the one. Now we come to three. So the index is three and the value is three, we print the star. Okay, so let's see, we print the star and also we print the value. 
So it looks like the answer is, oh, wait a minute. Uh, let's see, the answer is uh, three, zero, one, two, three, that's correct. Four would be a star also. Seven, no, so let's see, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So look at that, the answer is B. Hey, uh, if there's a question that's graded incorrectly, please let me know. What is the correct syntax for opening a file in Python? Uh, well, it's got to use the word open. So uh, this one is not right. This one's not right. This one's not right. There it is. So the correct answer is B. Which is true of the badly formatted code? Uh, well, first we've got to identify uh, which uh, of these lines is definitely badly formatted. Well, uh, let's see, the second print can't be indented. Well, actually it can, of course, if the first print, uh, the first print is definitely bad. So if you fix the first print, the second print could be indented or might not be indented. Uh, B is definitely incorrect because uh, the first print must be indented. Uh, C is incorrect because while the first one must be indented, the second one could or might or might not. So the answer is D, the first print statement must be indented. Questions? Okay, what is the result when the program is executed? Uh, so it's gonna print begin test. Uh, it's going to add, attempt to add, hello plus five. And um, yeah. An error is generated before anything is printed. That can't be because print uh, begin test will print. And I got to get rid of this because it's uh, okay. Good. Uh, the program outputs begin test followed by hello five. Well, there's going to be an error here because of the mixing of a string and a number. So it can't be a the program outputs begin test and then an error is generated. That is the correct answer. Okay, questions? Which of the following loops is best implemented with a while loop? Uh, looping through the characters in a string and displaying yes if it's a vowel. Uh, well, uh, for looping through the characters in a string, that's tailor made for a four. So four, uh, let's say C in the string, and and that will accomplish the loop quite handily. Uh, all right. Uh, Asking the user to enter positive in integers and then exiting by entering a negative one. That one's got promise because once, because if you look at it, we don't know how many times we're going to loop. So let's look at the other answers and see if there's something better. Uh, counting how many keys in a dictionary start with the letter A. Well, that's tailor made for the four again because uh, you can say four. Uh, K in dictionary.keys. So uh, just like in A, the string has a known length, so you know how many times to loop. C has a known length, you know how many times to loop. Uh, loop. Uh, same thing for D. So D is also a for loop 
uh, just, just begging to be a for loop. So the correct answer is B, the only one where you don't know in advance how many times you need to loop. Questions? Okie dokie. Oh, yeah, that's so wide. Uh, a company wants to send a reminder email to users who have not logged in for more than 10 days by less than 20 days. Which expression can be used to decide if a user should get an email or not? So uh, we're looking for the number of days uh, since the last login, more than 10, less than 20. So if the day since login is greater than 10, that looks good. And not days login, uh, less than 20. So let's say it was, is 15 less than 20? Yes, but then the not would make it a no. So it's not a, okay. Uh, Let's look at C, if the day since login is greater than 10, that's part of it, but uh, where's the mention of the 20? And what about this or, I think that disqualifies D, so the correct answer is B, that if the days since login is greater than 10 and less than 20, there's the right answer. All right, so let's see how many times does this loop iterate? So I starts at five. <coughs> so uh, five is less than 10. So uh, uh, five will print. Then I become six. Six is less than 10. So six will print. And seven is less than 10. All right, that's three. And eight is less than 10 and nine is less than 10, and then I becomes 10, and 10 is not less than 10. No. So I've got five fingers up. I think the answer is C. No. Right. Questions, anybody? Really? Yeah, okay, dogs, dogs be gone. Okie dokie, uh, what's output? My string is the area postal code. That's weird. I wonder if the person who wrote this is not native to the United States. Uh, the area postal code is 99501. Yeah, this one, this one I had a question on. All right. Why don't I run through it and then you ask your question. Okay, sounds good. All right. So this will uh, examine the fifth from the right. So one, two, three, four, five. So the fifth from the right is nine, and that's is digit, that'll print true. Okay. And uh, okay, so this will uh, consider these, all of these digits. Hmm, okay. Uh, then uh, starting at the third and looking at the Oh, okay. Uh, so starting at the third and looking to the end uh, is upper. You know, I didn't notice that these were asking for ranges. I have no idea what this is going to do. So Milo, your, problem, your question might be something like, what is this going to do? And I already gave you my answer. I have no idea what this is going to do. We should try this. 
My first question is why would somebody do this? Let's see. Uh, all right, let's go to. Um, okay, I'll, well, I'll just start a, a new program. All right, and let's get in the rest of that. So I was suspecting, well, let's just run it and see. Um, true, false, and false. Okay, so that is behaving like, uh, so starting at fifth to the end and going, considering all of the characters to the end, they all are digits, so true. And then, let me just go away. All right. Uh, so starting at the index three, which is here, and going to the end is upper. Well, that's not true. That's false. And uh, starting at three, going all the way to the end is lower. Well, like maybe the, uh, let's just do this. Um, print. Uh, 99501 dot is lower. Uh, let's run that again. I'm expecting false. Okay. So, uh, so what is the answer? The answer is true, false, false. Uh, let's go. True, false, false. Looks like B. Myla, what's your question? Why is the minus five on the uh, left side of the colon and both of the threes are on the right side? Okay, that's specifying a slice. So right. on the left hand side is where it's gonna start. Mm -hmm. And on the right hand side is where it's gonna end. And if there's, if it's missing, it means go to the end. So this says start five from the right and go to the end. That's right. the first one. And then this one says, uh, start at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, okay. So start at the beginning and go three to index three. So that would be T-H-E. And not, neither of those are correct because the T is capital and the H and the E are lower. Case. Right, right. Gotcha. Yeah, okay, now, I, now I'm reading it carefully. Okay. So start at the beginning and go three characters in. All start right. at the beginning and go three characters in. Okay, thank you. Okay. See, I, my thinking was colored by uh, my almost 50 years of doing C and C++, which has these functions, is digit is upper and is lower, but they only work on one character. So I, I was looking at this saying, what? All right. Uh, the list, 1880, 990 easy tax forms. Uh, which statement will print out 990 easy? So this would start at the beginning and go in by one. So that's not right. This one would start at zero, one, two. No, I'm sorry. This one would start at the beginning because it's empty and go in by two. So again, 1880 is not part of the output. And this one prints only one item. So that's uh, my list one. So zero, one. Oh, that looks like the correct answer. So let's check that. My list two, so zero, one, two. And looks like the correct answer is C. Okay, fill in the blank so that the loop displays all odd numbers from one to a hundred. 
so while i is less than or equal to 100 it starts out at one so one is printed that's odd i mean that's good odd odd in a good way uh, then i equals i plus two so you'll go from one to three to five to seven nine etc okay uh, this would print all of the numbers and this would be an infinite loop and this would be an infinite loop Okay, what is output? And uh, this function has some parameters that are given default values. So if plan isn't given, the default value is basic. And if term isn't given, the default value is 30. So let's do what we got here. Uh, the first thing printed is app ID, that sounds okay. Uh, the second thing printed is a plan, but plan has a default value of basic. So even if you don't, even if you don't give it, it'll be basic. And then term uh, would be uh, heat printed here, and it has a default value of thirty. But in this case, they overrode the default with fourteen. <laughs> So which one of these is correct? Uh, it will print something, so it's not A. App uh, with no spaces, then a parenthesis. Uh, plan isn't given, so we're gonna get basic. Uh, see, it can't be this one because we will get basic. So we've got basic plan 14 days, look like C because the 30 would be incorrect. It would be overwritten by the 14. Okay, anybody? Okay. Fill in the blank so that the output is a count of how many negative values are in the list temperatures. So uh, what we want to do, so for T in the temperatures, the count starts out at zero, good. Uh, if uh, T, uh, it's got to be something to do with T. Uh, but if T, eh, this one's not right because T is going to get each of the individual values one at a time. So, uh, that's not that's not even legal. Uh, now this one is incorrect because uh, well think about it. Uh, the, when if you try to get temperatures negative two, it's going to have an index error and crash. So what about uh, this one's not realistic because temperatures is a list. You can't say list less than zero. But what about C? If T is less than zero, add to the count. Okay, so the correct answer is C. Okay. What is output? Uh, so calc takes two numbers apparently, and it prints one plus num two plus num1 plus num2. So uh, it's just going to add one to the sum of the arguments and then uh, put a space and return. So let's see, four and five, the answer would be 10. There's a 10. That's, that's the only one with a 10. So we're done. Let's just check one and two. One and two is three plus one is four, so it is D.
what initial value of X will cause an infinite loop? So while X is not equal to zero, subtract two and print something. So if, if uh, X were started out as zero, while zero not equal to zero, so we wouldn't even get in the loop. Uh, let's try four. So four isn't zero. So you print, uh, you take away two. Now you got two, you print two. All right, go back is two. Two is not equal to zero. You take away uh, two, you get to zero. You print zero, zero not equal to zero. And that's false. The loop ends. So it looks like if we put in uh, any even number, it, the loop will end. If we put in an odd number, the loop will become infinite. Uh, let's try putting in one. One's not one of the choices here, but it's easier than seven. So uh, is one not equal to zero? Yes, so we enter the loop. Uh, X becomes negative one, which is now also not equal to zero, and it gets worse and more negative from there. So that's the infinite loop is an odd number. Okie dokie. What is the value of X uh, after the following code is executed? So X is seven, the if statement is skipped and then seven becomes nine. Okay. Uh, which branch structure does a program use to output yes if a variable's value is positive or no otherwise? So it would be uh, if else. So if by itself uh, wouldn't handle the no otherwise, else by itself is not legal. And if else if else, that's three cases and we only need two. So the answer is B. Okay, any questions? Uh, here's the um, <clears throat> here's the question that didn't have a question. Uh, this part was missing on your exam. So uh, what conditions have to be true in order to make the code display a B or print a B? Well, let's look. Uh, here's the B. So uh, an only way to get into this block is if the code is read. Okay. So that eliminates C. Uh, if the style is less than three, print A. So if it's a three or a four, it'll print B. So if it's, let's say it's a three, this if statement will be false. Three is less than five, so you print B. Four will work. Um, and uh, five uh, will print C. So um, the correct answer is D. Which of the following statements prints the last field in each row of a CSV file? So let's see what we've got here. Uh, with open uh, and for reading as F, let's check the others, see if that's part of the problem. Uh, with open, yeah, that's fine. With open, with open. Okay, so there's no issues with the first line. So CSV data is a reader wrapping uh, the file F. Good, uh, but then this one, 
doesn't print, there's no loop here. So each row you're not getting. So it's not, uh, the answer is not A. So how about B? Uh, that's correct. For each line in there, print the last one. Okay, this one looks good. <laughs> this one, the slicing is not correct because you'll be starting at zero, position zero, uh, and going almost to the end. And this one is uh, just bad, badly constructed. So the answer is B. Okay, what is printed? Uh, one giant leap for mankind. Uh, print the uh, starting at zero and ending at uh, letter five. So, uh, oh, uh, so zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, so I'm thinking that A is the correct answer. Okay, anybody? So uh, the, um, the, what is it, uh, Neil Armstrong? First, uh, first uh, human on the moon, is that right? Not Aldrin. Aldrin just did the, uh, you know, he was, he was the co-pilot. Yeah. He was along for the ride. So uh, uh, what is remembered is uh, uh, him saying uh, one giant, uh, one small step for man, uh, one giant leap for mankind as he stepped foot, uh, as stepped onto the moon. Uh, and that is a, uh, a mishearing. It's what he actually said is one giant, uh, one small step for a man. And people just don't hear the a. Uh. So uh, that actually makes a lot more syntactic sense because man is like all, you know, all of mankind. And then he says mankind. So they're both mankind, uh, but it's for a man and one giant leap for mankind. Okay. Uh, after a function's last statement is executed, the program returns to the next line after what? Uh, this does not make sense, and this does not make sense, and this does not make sense. So the correct answer is uh, the a function returns one statement after the function call. Okay. Which has an error, assume X equals 10 and Y equals 20. Okay. So which of these has an error? Well, this seems okay. You know, if uh, X is less than or equal to Y, okay. If X is not equal to Y, hey, what's this funny thing? Lonely equal sign. I think they meant two equal signs, equals equals. So that's the one that has an error. So this question is asking the length of the dictionary, my dict. Uh, and it's a bit of a trick question because you can see within here, your eye is drawn to another dict, another dictionary. That the length of my dict is one, two. The correct answer is two. So these values are embedded inside state. So are, they're not counted as one of the 
keys in my underscore dict. How many times will the print statement execute for I in a range of 10? So you'll get 10 loops out of that. Uh, for J in range of three, you'll get three loops out of that. There's no breaks, there's no continues. So it looks like we're gonna get 10 times three or 30 loops of the print statement. Correct answer is D. All right, what is output? So X starts at 18, while X mod three is zero. So let's see, uh, 18 mod three is zero. So we print 18. And then X is integer divided by three. So its next value is six. Uh, six mod three is also zero. So we print six, then six mod, uh, so I'm sorry, six integer divided by three is two. So here we go, there's the correct answer. Which of the following is true? A function must always have at least one return statement. That's not true. If a function comes to its end without a return, then it does return, it just doesn't return anything. A function must have exactly one return statement or none at all. That is not true. Uh, it can have more than one return statement. It's just not a good practice to have more than one, but you can. A function can have any number of return statements, that's true, or no return statement at all, that's true also. So the correct answer is looking like C, let's examine D. A function can only return strings, numbers, not lists of dictionaries, that's ridiculous. Okay. All right, what is output? New list is Python development, uh, append in progress, print it. Uh, well, let's look at B. Uh, this is putting a list inside the list. I don't see any evidence of that. Uh, C is appending in progress to something that's already in the list. That's not what this is doing. Uh, D is skipping the word development. I don't see a reason for that. And the answer is A. A child is required to use a booster seat in a car until the child is nine, or they do not exceed this line, no matter how old they are, but that's not in the question. Okay, you must be this tall to ride uh, without a car seat. Uh, a child is required to use a booster seat in the car until the child is nine, unless the child, oh, it's actually in there, unless the child reaches the height of 59 inches before nine which expression can be used to decide if a child requires a car seat or not? So if the age is nine, you have to wear a seat, uh, or the height is less than 59 inches. Uh, let's see, which expression can be used to decide if a child requires, so, Let's say you're eight years old. 
this would be true. And let's say you're three feet tall and this would be true. So this would say that the child needs uh, a car seat. What about the rest of these? Less than or equal? Well, it doesn't say, it says until the child is nine. So it can't be B. This is going the wrong direction. Greater than nine, no. And the, okay, so by process of elimination, it is A. Because the requirement of nine is less than nine versus nine or greater. So if the age is nine or greater, that's you don't have to wear. Maybe this could have been a be better asked. Instead of requires a car seat or not, it should just say if a child requires a car seat, evaluates the true. But the answer is A. Okay, so what is the output of this? So it's called once and with 205. So if it's greater than 195 and less than or equal to 205, perfect temperature. Uh, okay, so the first one is gonna be perfect temperature. And this one, this one prints that, but it's not saying anything about the second call. So it can't be A. Uh, this is printing the right things, but there's no new line here. This, is, this and this are on the same line. Uh, here we are, C. Perfect temperature and then a new line of too cold. Uh, what is output? Uh, here is the list of uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, print all of new list and then min new list plus max of new list. So uh, let's see if we what we can learn by uh, just looking for this one. So min here would be 0. Max would be 4. So 0 plus 4 is 4. So any of these uh, that don't print four is eliminated. So D is out and uh, B is out. Uh, what does all do? Did we discuss it in class? No, we didn't discuss it in class. So maybe there's a good reason why I uh, added three to every one score. So um, what does all do? Let's find out. False and four. Uh, but what does all do? I wonder if there's a way that we could find out without looking at a uh, Python manual. So how about, um, or maybe we should just look at a Python manual. Let's see, Python all. So it returns true if all of the items in the list are true. So do we have a zero in there? Let's take a look. Yep, we do. The zero is interpreted as false and one through four are interpreted as true. So that's why uh, false and four. I'm not, so, so it just... You're good. It comes back as false because those are numbers and not true? Uh, well, uh, not exactly. It comes back as false because numbers other than zero are interpreted as true. But there is a zero in there. So that one is false, making the all function come back as false. Now we didn't cover it in class. 
So let's, uh, let's say that uh, you get credit for this problem no matter what you answered because I did add three to everybody's grade. Okay. All right, what will be printed for uh, when X is 1.6, blah, 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 and you want uh, five positions after the decimal. So uh, one, uh, this one is out because there's nothing saying it should print 0, 0, 0, 1. And this one is out. Uh, so it comes down to which one of these has five decimal places. One, two, three, four, five. I think the answer is B. Which statement uses the square function to assign the variable T with 16? All right, uh, excuse the formatting. Okay, so what you're looking for is the square of the square of two. So two squared is four, and then four squared is 16. So we want, we're looking for one that nests square inside of square. And there it is. Okay. Uh, oh, this one's missing a question also. Uh, well, it must be, what is this print? For I in the range uh, of, uh, it's going to print, go from zero and stop at 10, including 10. So if uh, I is six, then skip it. So we're looking for one of these that ends with the value of 10. <laughs> and doesn't include six. So that looks like D. So if X is 10 and Y is 20, which of these is true? Uh, it's not A because 20 is bigger than that. Uh, let's see, uh, two times X would be 20 and it would be Y not equal, to, uh, 20 not equal to 20, that, that one's not true. Uh, this one's obviously not true because 10 and 20 are different and 20 is greater than X. Okay, excess indentation must be removed from which lines to make the code correct? Well, line one, you can't remove, there's, there's no indentation, so you can't remove it. So anything that includes one is wrong. So it can't be B and it can't be D. Okay, uh, so which one of these lines is excessive? Uh, well, this else needs to be in the same line as the, the same column as the if. So um, line, the correct answer has to include uh, line four. But what about the if itself? That seems there's no reason for it to be indented. So the correct answer has got to include uh, four, uh, sorry, two, then three, and four. Okay, so the correct answer is C. So take these lines and remove indentation. Uh, in this case, remove two extra indents.
which of these correctly calls the add function, which uh, prints the sum of three arguments. These semicolons rule out A. Uh, this is ruled out because the addition is done right away, so you only got one argument in truth. This one is ruled out because it doesn't, it's missing the commas. That leaves B. Okay, so what value for triple X uh, causes the program to output the message, hello? Okay, so it's not A. It's not B because there's no parentheses here. It's not D because uh, you're passing an argument and the function does not take an argument. And that leaves C. So which sequence is generated by a range of four? So that'd be zero, one, two, three. Oh, this was not supposed to be here. Yeah, I told you uh, list comprehension uh, will make your brain hurt. And uh, there it is, my brain hurts. That's not supposed to be there. I will go back and add one more to everyone's score. I was pretty sure I did not include any of that. My apologies, I will add one to everyone's score. Uh, which determines if a user init is in the list of accepted units? Uh, if accepted units in user init, no, it's uh, the uh, other way around. If user init in accepted units, yep, that's the one. Okay, so the correct answer is B. All right, what is output? This is the last one. Uh, you've got a list within a list for the first member of new list, then you have string and string. Okay, so print new list uh, zero to two. So that's going to be the zeroth entry and the one uh, index one. So if it has have a nice day, it's not right, it's wrong. So that rules out B. So now the only trickery is um, uh, what is the index zero going to print as? And you see that it's a list within a list. So the bracket, square bracket says uh, it's a list. And then the second set of square brackets says it's a list inside of a list. And then the second item is good morning. And that is correct. The correct answer is A. So it's not C because somehow the list, the interior list here went away. And it's not D because it doesn't include the good morning. All right, so uh, uh, upshot is, uh, we definitely should not have seen the uh, list comprehension uh, and the all, uh, let's compromise. I'll add one for everybody, uh, but I've already added three. So I think, I think that's fair. Does anybody disagree? Okay, so any questions about the exam? Is this kind of what the final will be like? 
Yeah, it's exactly like what the final would be like. All right. Yep. Okie dokie. So any other questions about the exam? Well, I figured them out as we went through them. Okie dokie. Uh, so I'd like to finish our uh, flashcards program. Do you mind and if I share my screen? I've been getting an error that I don't understand for the flashcard program. Uh, very good. Let me stop share and enable your sharing of your screen. Okay, go ahead. Can you see my replit? I do now, yes. So, um, over here, um, it's telling me that line 304 in shuffle is causing an error, and I don't understand like why that's erroring. Okay. Well, uh, do you have access to uh, Python 3.8 slash random.py line 304? Not that I know of. Correct. So <clears throat> let's look for a line that's inside your program. So let's read I cannot hear you, and I don't know if that's my connection. What? You can't hear me? Can you hear me now? I can Anybody? hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I can too. OK. So I guess we just have to say, uh, you know, it's it, it, it's not me. It's you. It is me. Yeah. <laughs> OK. So could this be line 59 then in my program? Where Let's like take a look at what line shuffle? 50. Yeah, line uh, 59 calls shuffle. Yep. So let's see what we can figure out about uh, line 59. So you're trying to shuffle something called data. So where does data get set? If you scan backwards, you see that data is changed on line 54. So what is the value of data getting? Well, it looks like you're trying to call a function called get data, but yeah. there's something missing. Oh, do I need parentheses there? Try it, find out. That's what I'm getting as well. Okay. Uh, but you didn't get the error that you got before, so that sounds like progress. <laughs> right? So uh, how about this? Let's find out why uh, you're getting the message must provide a file name. Did we put that up above? I'm thinking line seven. So when you say python flashcard.py, py, argv comes to you as a list, and the list only has one member. Oh, did we have to put the Japanese file in there too? Yep, try that now. Yep. Does that go after flashcard.py? Space. And go ahead. CSV, yep. Oh, cool, okay. Awesome. Oh, awesome, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, I just noticed something in the chat. 
Uh, Colin, can you hear everyone? Anyone? Yes. Okay. So, um, anybody else have uh, uh, a desire to have their screen shared? You know what? I would like to because I think I'm having a couple problems. All right, go right ahead. I feel like this could be anything. Actually, first of all, is this a shell thing? Yeah, uh, you need to run this program from the shell. All right. Okay, even then it's still not printing. Okay, uh, could you show it uh, running, please? Line 58. Anybody uh, uh, see the problem? Your elif should be indented the same as the if. Correct. And I know I got to do those things below it too. Okay. Okay, however, there's still a problem. Uh, line 59 and line 61 aren't uh, legal blocks of code. If you don't have that code ready yet, what could you use as a, as a place filler? I don't know if you just didn't go over this or I didn't pay attention or something. So I don't know what the goes pass. there. P-A-S-S. -S. All right, try that. Oh, all right. <laughs> oh, this is, that's console. Yeah. Oh, it's. Yeah, don't, don't use run. Shouldn't it still be able to? No, it was working correctly. Uh, the, go ahead and uh, type in Python space main.py, which is just like hitting run. Okay. Provide a file name. All right. So uh, if you go up to the very top, I think you'll see uh, we saw line seven, uh, but not in your case. In your case, line 11. So it's doing what it's supposed to do. So give it another argument on the command line. So Python space, nope, 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 oh, nope. Shoot. Yeah. So be long. Oh, what was I thinking? You have to have your uh, Python and then the file name, so main.py, and then you add the Japanese.csv. You mean both of them? Yes. All right, then. Let's do it. Oh, all right. That was return. How about one? Okay, that's progress. Okay, so in order to use shuffle, what must you do?
Shuffle is not defined. Okay, if, if things were all hunky-dory, all correct, what, uh, where would shuffle come from? Pretty sure shuffle would just not come until late into it. I'm marveling at the uh, translation of that. I mean, if I type something in here, would it just come right after that? Into well, the shell, I mean? Go to the very top of your file. And think about something to go near the top of the file. Shuffle equals something? No, no. Shuffle is not built into the Python language. Therefore, it comes from a package. Which package does it come from? And shouldn't that package need to be imported? Japanese.csv. No, shuffle, shuffle. Anybody uh, offer some help? From random import shuffle. Right. And uh, yeah, what so should I put from, that on? From random import shuffle. Doesn't matter where. Uh, well, you're, where you are is a good place. All right. From random import shuffle. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Random employee shuffle. Uh, you put out there. Can you say that again? Uh, I'm just reading what the uh, the real time closed captions is generating, and uh, it is not that good. But go ahead, try your program again. All right. Oh no, no, shoot. All right, then. All right, hit enter. Okay. Oh, shoot. No. <laughs> All right, so use up arrow. Enter. Hit enter. Hit enter. Cool. Seems to be working now. All right. I just wish I remember the day we did this on. Uh, so let's see, uh, today is Thursday. So Tuesday was the exam. That means the previous Thursday was review. So it's uh, a week ago, Tuesday. All right. My memory was a little shady on this. Wait, your memory is shady on that? Yeah, you're too young to, to have shady memory on a particular day. I, I mean, like 1980s, my memory of the 1980s is shady. So that's a whole decade. So I guess you're doing pretty good. You can, you, you're you having trouble remembering one day. I'm sort of like uh, missing a decade. You know what? I think it can be because I can only remember the time I had good Wi-Fi. That doesn't cut out every five seconds. Mm. Uh, you're in a dorm, so please uh, invest in a uh, Ethernet cable and connect it to your wall. I have been. Things have been working strangely. Okay. Meaning not at all. Yep. But uh, should I get out of screen share now? Yes, please. All right, then. Thanks for your help. You're welcome. Okie dokie. Hey, just out of curiosity, what does Ethernet connect to on your computer? 
Is there special well, internet port very, on your computer? If, if you have a very modern computer, then nothing at all. Uh, older laptops had uh, an ethernet connector built into them. Right. Uh, but, excuse me. Like an ethernet uh, port. I'm sorry, what? Like an ethernet port. Yes, an ethernet port, a connector. Right, so, but uh, they're fairly tall and um, tall laptops aren't sexy. So in order to reduce the height of laptops, they eliminated the connector figuring, well, if you want wired ethernet, you'll just get a dongle or adapter that adapts USB to ethernet. Okay, thank right. you. So, I just got an adapter uh, with one of these on it. Yeah, that's exactly. I was going to go find one and show it to you as well. Um, and the word dongle, uh, do we cover this already? Or I should put it on the final. Anybody know where the word dongle comes from? Okay. So a dongle is a part of a ship which serves no useful purpose. Comes from the Royal Navy. We, we owe our uh, uh, ancestral country for that lovely word. Okay. So what the, why is it named after that? Well, because uh, dongles in generally are, it's, it's a derisive uh, uh, use of the word uh, that these little doodads that you have to add to your computer or serve no other useful purpose. So they're dongles. Yep. Sydney, I'm sorry, you have to get some artwork. Yeah, I... I was going to when I moved in, but it just kind of slipped my mind every time I went home. But yes, you're right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Make it yours. I'll work on it. See, uh, Colin has that uh, picture over his shoulder that looks like the inside of a closet, but it's a picture. Fair enough. Yeah, see? Okay. See, I, I've got a moon behind me. All right, let's uh, get back to that program. That's got nothing on my closet. Yep. Okay, so uh, what I had asked you to consider uh, is, uh, this isn't the version of the code that I was looking at a minute ago, but hey, I can, I can roll with it. Uh, so if we were to complete this, I could copy here and paste it there and paste it here too. But the difference between mode one is whether or not, the difference between mode one, mode two, and mode three is which value is printed and then you wait for a return and then which value is printed after that. So should you print the Japanese and then the English or the English and then the Japanese or mode three is either one of those picking at random. So to, to make the program work, uh, but uh, not well, uh, not nicely, I would change this from a zero to a one and this from a one to a zero. And now mode one and mode two work. But I'm really disturbed by all of this shared code which is identical except for a one and a zero. So that's the question that I wanted you to consider is how <clears throat> we could refactor, fancy word for modify, uh, how we could refactor this code so that uh, uh, we get mode one and mode two and even mode three just by uh, uh, without, with a minimum of repeated code. 
So has anybody given that thought? Could you make all of that that you have highlighted a function and then make the parameters, whether it's item one or zero first? Excellent idea. That is a truly excellent idea. Let's try that. So uh, I have, uh, this is now copied. So let's create a function. Uh, well, that one's called ask questions. So maybe we'll call this one in a kind of snarky way, uh, actually ask question. And we'll have um, uh, Q and A. And let me uh, paste here, fix up the indent. Is this gonna work? Yeah, okay. So if we print A, uh, Q, print the question, and then print the answer. Okay, is that what you had in mind or would you rather I pass numbers? No, that looks fine. Okay, all right, then let's modify down here. I don't know where those letters came from. I swear it wasn't me who typed them. Look at that. And now here we can Okay, I'm liking that a lot more. Now, what can we do with mode three, which is uh, random? There's a lot of different ways you could do this. Anybody have a, a, a solution? How about, we'll just say Q is, uh, let's say defaults to item zero and A defaults to item one. And now where's the random part? Make sure I imported random. Uh, how about uh, comma ran int. Okay, then go back down here. And how about if rand int uh, starting at zero and including one equals one. So half the time. Uh, now, how can I reverse Q and A? That's all I need to do here is just reverse Q and A, swap them. This is kind of a cool thing about Python. So you could, you could do what? You could say uh, a temporary uh, variable is equal to Q and then Q is equal to A and then A is equal to the temporary. That would swap, right? Okay, so to prove to yourself that that would swap. Hey, a question. Yeah. D Wait. Does Randint work with T, Q, and A? Well, Randint is, Randint is only being used to decide oh, if you right. need to swap or not. Right, right, right.
Okay, so uh, is everyone satisfied that those three lines of Python will swap, uh, will swap those two, right? Everybody satisfied? And if I just made a hand gesture that means something, I, I apologize. I have no idea what that meant, but that's why I figured out how to raise just two fingers and swap them. Okay, now, if you were to do this, it would be correct, but it's not particularly Pythonic. So instead, watch this. This is really cool about Python. To swap these two values, just say Q and A is equal to A and Q. Okay, let's uh, run the program. Python flashcards, giving it input. And let's pick three. Uh, so we've got Japanese, then English, English, then Japanese, English, then Japanese, English, then Japanese, Japanese, then English. Mode three works now. And we also demonstrated that we're able to handle all three cases using a single set of code. So I'm happy now. I'm happier. The only thing that will make me truly happy is if fudgicles were still a nickel. You have no idea what I meant. <laughs> I know what you mean. You know what fudgicles are? Yeah, I love those. Yeah. Or when I was younger, I did. I haven't had them in like at least 10 years. When you were younger, how much did they cost? I can't remember because I would always make my parents get them. Yeah. Well, when I was younger, they were nickel. So. I'm jealous of your time. Yeah. All right, so uh, I'm, I'm much happier with this code. Can you ask questions, please? Yes, I just tried to do something and it exploded. Oh, that sounds exciting, Milo. Could you share yeah. a little bit more? Let's see. It was okay until we redid the thing with the function. Now I've got a Trace back, got errors in line 92, 85, 62, 47. Oh, God, it's all over the place. Oh, uh, no. It doesn't know what items are. What? Why does it Could you, I'm inviting you to share your screen. Excellent. Okay. Da, 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 da. Replit, flashcards. Share. You see oh, this one? Yeah? Open says me. So the most recent call is last. Uh, so take a look at line 47. Yep. And print you're print trying zero. to print item sub zero. Yeah, Except it's been replaced with Q. Ah. And on line 51, item sub one has been replaced with A for question and answer. Yeah. So then what about all of these ones down that we've done down here? That's correct. Those are correct. Those are correct? Yep. But these ones up here are not. Correct. Okay. Whoop, whoop. Right? Because uh, you're using parameters whose names are Q and A. Right. You're passing in item. Mm. Let's see. One. Okay. It works now. Thank you. All right. Well, it doesn't work until it 
finished working. So hit return. Return. Let's make sure it works. Oh, okay, keep going. I thought I saw something weird. Okay. Good. Something weird might have been I ch I moved my. Maybe you're camera. hitting enter uh, a few times uh, twice when I thought you were hitting it once. Oh, sorry. See, like there, it printed both. Enter, enter, enter. Good. All right. Enter. Looks like it's working. Yay. All right. So there it is. You've, you've actually written a program that takes a data file in comma separated value format and uh, uh, presents flashcards in both uh, A to B and ordering of B to A and it does it at random. When you reach the end of your flashcard deck, it'll ask you if you want to go again and it'll reshuffle the deck. And not only that, by using sys.argv, you made the program so general purpose, you could have lots of data files with Japanese, with biology, uh, with any subject that you can imagine where you want to uh, exercise your memory, memorization with flashcards. So you, you uh, and even, even better, you've got some error checking inside there. You've got the exception handling. If you can't open the file, you're checking to make sure that the file name was actually given. So you've got yourselves a pretty robust application. You have written an application. Good. Good for you. It's and it's useful. You could use this in other classes. So well done, everybody. Do you mind sharing your screen real quick and going back to the uh, actual question function? Sure. And that cool little Pythonism here to swap the two variables is uh, I'm highlighting it now down at the bottom of the screen. And so uh, what the final, I was asked, what's the final going to be like? And I said, it's going to be exactly like the midterm. Uh, so when we get close to the final for a review, we'll go over the midterm again. And uh, I'll add in a few other new questions that represent the newer material. And that'll be a good review for them for later. Okay, anybody have any questions before we uh, uh, part ways for the weekend? I got to admit, every Thursday afternoon after four o'clock, I do a little happy dance uh, because, uh, uh, you know, I only teach on Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, because Monday, Wednesday, Friday is just filled with committee meetings and grading and doing all that other stuff that you have to do. But instruction is only on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So at the end of Thursday afternoon, I do my happy dance and I, and I sing, uh, the, you know, instead of schools out for summer, I sing uh, schools out for the weekend. So, so later today, I'm going to do my happy dance. Does anybody have a happy dance? Can you show us your happy dance? Yeah. All right. Everybody does their happy dance and I'll see you on Tuesday. Have a good yeah, weekend. We're happy to get a nice old guy. Okay, bye-bye.